shows an increase in TV watching. And why would we care about TV watching, video games, computer use, and things like that? Well, um, we care about it because as, as people watch more television, they uh, become more isolated. So to the extent that somebody watches television a lot, um, they are not communicating um, socially with other people, either in their home or in their community, because they spend all day um, in, inside. And, and the same might be a set of um, cars and garage doors and um, fences where people live in gated communities and fenced houses and they drive home from work in their air-conditioned car, pull into their garage, shut the door, go inside and turn on the television and have, and have very little to no contact with their neighbors. They don't know their neighbors and are not concerned about what their neighbors do unless their neighbors get out of hand, in which case I just call the police. And so we, we just don't really have a lot of contact. And so People who report that their primary form of entertainment, all the way on the right-hand side, um, and, uh, and, and, and people that don't attend church tend to be less likely to participate in um, community projects and more likely to, uh, to, to flip people off, to give people the bird. So what, what, what you learn is that... Um, uh, that church and, and, and it isn't religion so much um, as much as you're creating social connections and you're, you're participating in your local community. Um, so this is civic engagement and television watching. So people that watch um, less television are more likely to be civically engaged, meaning that they attend public meetings, they wrote Congress, they offer, um, uh, they, 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 they participate on committees of uh, local organizations. Um, so social capital index, um, and again, this would be comprised of things like, can people in your community be trusted? Can, um, do you participate or volunteer in your community? Do you vote and things like that? Um, and as it relates or correlates to um, healthy state index. Um, so you can look and what you see are places that have high levels of social capital are uh, Vermont, um, Montana, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, New Hampshire, there's Utah, and uh, these are the states that report the highest social, uh, pardon, the highest um, health index for, the, for states. Um, and uh, places with low social capital, um, they tend to be in the uh, southeast. And again, these were places that, um, as you may recall from the discussion on uh, social determinants of health, were the states that reported greatest social discord, um, social problems, poor health, and things like that. And, and that's um, corroborated here um, in, in this graph. Social capital index by murder rate. So again, you see um, states with the lowest murder rates are those states that have the highest levels of social capital. Age-adjusted mortality rate. So again, states with high social capital have the lowest age-adjusted mortality rates. Um, Utah, uh, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, And this one's just kind of interesting because it, it, it indicates um, a, a, an ever-growing um, disregard for law. And, you know, that's been something that the United States has long time um, kind of touted as one of, the, um, one, one of the underpinnings, kind of theoretical, uh, moral underpinnings, if you will, for the existence of our democracy and its perseverance, and that is the observance of law. Well, um, what this graph shows is that uh, actually um, we are becoming less and less concerned about even simple laws like stop sign laws. And so um, the uh, per uh, percentage of drivers that, uh, that, that don't stop um, continues to increase, and uh, uh, as does those that come do a complete stop. And so, you know, not that this in and of itself creates uh, serious problems, probably usually doesn't result in accidents, but it's just an indication of our continued um, disregard for the law. And this is um, shows that um, tr trust, both for adults, which would be the top line, 
and for teenagers on the bottom line, um, more and more people report that people cannot be trusted. And this is also interesting uh, because it's showing that uh, in, in conjunction with all of the graphs that I've just showed you, there's an ever-increasing um, what we might call suburbanization of America, which means that um, people are no longer um, living close to their neighbors, and we now live in the suburbs where, as I've described earlier, we live in gated housing or um, neighborhoods where we drive and we drive home and we pull in the garage and we shut the garage door and we have very little contact with our neighbors. And so um, what, what this graph shows is on the top, uh, well, by year 2000, that top line that's nearly 50% shows that uh, nearly 50% of America lives in what we might call a suburb. Now, there are two types of social capital um, one of them we call bridging social capital, and these are social ties that attempt to cut across differences, including race, gender, um, disability, class, religion. Um, so these are this is this is kind of an outward-looking or cross-cutting social capital. Um, so ways in which um, social capital has been uh, constructed in a bridging sense, uh, things like civil rights movement, where um, now in America it is not. Well, 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 it still tends to be uh, more common for people to report um, less trust for members of other racial and ethnic groups. Um, we see more and more um, engagement um, between race and ethnicities so that we have um, youth sports teams um, that have uh, parents of lots of different race and ethnicities and coaches who are, um, you know, different racial and ethnic groups or makeup than even the players on the team and um, and and you know you have um, white parents coaching teams and uh, african-american parents coaching teams and hispanic parents coaching teams and asian parents coaching teams um, we have uh, more and more although there still are discrepancies but more and more um, involvement by racial and ethnic minorities in the u.s. participating in politics and of course, with the last presidential election, there was an, uh, certainly an increase in minority participation in vote. Um, and so these types of social capital we call bridging, meaning that we're trying to make inroads with other racial and ethnic groups or people who are not, um, um, we'll, we'll call them hetero, uh, heterogeneous or people who are very different um, the second type we call bonding social capital, and, and bonding social capital tends to link people together who, who, who are very similar to themselves. So um, we, this might be families, um, neighborhood associations, uh, members of the country club, uh, um, perhaps even, um, uh, you know, here at BYU, for example, you all share very similar interests in as much as uh, most of us uh, tend to be members of one religion and we all have similar interests um, in the sense we'll say scholarly interests we're all studying we're all students um, and so we, we tend to um, uh, develop um, these strong bonds and relationships um, but they don't help us much across communities um, in fact, um, I've, I've even heard people say that uh, bonding um, social capital is what helps us um, get along. Bridging social capital is what helps us get ahead. So, for example, um, we're, we're able to have very strong relationships with our family members, people that we trust. Um, but in order to really get ahead, we need bridging social capital. So, for example, you need to be able to find employment, gainful employment, by using your social connections. Um, and, and this would be, you know, the broader your social network, the more likely it is that you will be successful. So you can find a job um, on another, in another part of the country or 
um, perhaps in another um, discipline or a field um, uh, that you're not currently working in. And so to the extent that you have strong bridging social capital, you're able to make those leaps and be more successful. But bonding social capital is really the social capital that we probably rely most on from a day-to-day -day basis. So we um, strengthen these relationships that we have with our friends and with our family. And those help us to get along each day. Um, but bridging social capital helps us to get ahead. Um, so um, in, in kind of uh, uh, closing, um, I wanted to uh, point you toward this um, kind of interesting um, area that's now being studied, and that is historically, uh, people who have limited social connections uh, feel isolated. So if you don't have a lot of friends, you feel very isolated and you don't have a lot of bridging or bonding social capital. But uh, one, one area that we are now looking at in public health is to what extent are people cre is social capital generated and created on the internet and on uh, social media sites? So people on Twitter, are they able to share some sort of bridging and perhaps bonding social capital with uh, people that they follow? Um, what about uh, through uh, Facebook or other places? And, and, I, and I have seen... Um, People get jobs quickly by posting onto their Facebook page that they're looking for a job and, uh, and, and here's my skill set. And very quickly people have responded and been able to point them in the right direction by um, suggesting contacts or other people they might get in touch with. And that right there is bridging social capital at its, uh, at its best. 